Hi everyone, I'm Marion Short, the CEO of IAP2 Australasia, and welcome to the May 2024 Advocacy Update. Well, it's been a busy time and I want to share three exciting things with you, but there's more coming, so next month will be exciting too. Um, we're very pleased to be launching the next in our Thought Leadership series. This is a new report from Sally Hussey. Groundbreakers and Transparency Makers, the Role of Engagement in ESG. Now, we are going to be launching this report at Parliament House Canberra on the 30th of May. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and joining me at the report launch will be a couple of members from our board, our Chair Tony Clark and Deputy Chair Michelle Barry. I'm also really excited to have um, some really lovely members of IAP2 joining us um, from our advocacy committee. We have Helen Lear, Donna Groves and Kate Kernahan, and of course, honorary fellow that really needs no introduction, Kylie Cochran. Also will be Sally Hussey. Now we've invited all of the um, politicians and their policy advisors to drop in and have a chat with IAP2 on the 30th of May. So it's a, um, it's a, a first for us to be invited to Parliament House to launch a report. So we're really excited about that. And as soon as that report has been launched at Parliament House, we will of course be sharing it with all of you, our members. Um, and it's an, ex an important report because our mission is to champion engagement that improves environmental, social and governance outcomes. And so this report is really uh, has been authored by Sally to address those issues and demonstrate how engagement underpins and improves ESG outcomes. So we're looking forward to sharing that with you soon. The other big piece that we're moving on to, I have shared previously, which is the development of an inclusive and accessible engagement policy paper. So we're currently scoping that up at the moment, and we will be working closely with our Brains Trust and our advocacy committee on what that looks like. It will be the first in what I hope will be a series of policy position papers from IAP2, um, and that will be coming out um, to you, our members, for your input into that report when we're a little bit further ahead on that. Um, and it really builds on the conversations and the work that we started at Uluru at the Leaders for Retreat last year. So this has been an important piece of work and important conversations that are threaded throughout IAP2 over the years. In New Zealand, we made a submission to the Fast Track Approvals Bill. Uh, and this um, is available on our website, so, so we will share that link with you. Our approach to the submission was very much to stick to our knitting, uh, and we did advocate for impacted communities and stakeholders to be included in the consultation sections of the bill. The bill currently only requires consultation um, to be undertaken where it's already required by legislation. Um, and of course, it's a very different government environment in New Zealand um, at the moment. And so just really putting forward the compelling evidence for the value of engagement and why that those parts of the bill needed to be expanded to include impacted communities and stakeholders. We also um, included in our submission our concerns around some of the timelines that are included in the bill because they're far too tight um, and we understand that that's a shared concern across New Zealand as well. So um, adding our voice to those concerns around the timeline. I want to make a shout out to Danielle Hamilton who's one of our New Zealand based directors for her support with our submission there as well. Um, we're actually going to be heading over to New Zealand. I think um, we're planning to be there in July um, to try and get in front of those key ministers to have a conversation about the value of engagement as a strategic consideration um, and catching up with those targeted portfolios. Um, yes, so once I have a better plan of what that looks like, I'll be in touch with our New Zealand members as well because it'd be great to meet with some of you while I'm there. 
Now, while I've got you, I just want to have a bit of a shout out for some of our new course offerings that are available. So this has come through from uh, member feedback and it's all part of advocating for engagement and building our capability. So we're really delighted to have launched Building Cultural Safety in Engagement. This is a course that um, is developed by Sarah Wilcox, the very first of our licensed IAP2 trainers to be an Aboriginal woman. So she's a proud Palawa woman from Lituatcha in Tasmania. And so we're really delighted to launch that course with her. And of course, it's sold out within hours. So we've put more up on the calendar. We've also launched Generative AI for Engagement Professionals. That's in partnership with Communication Link. You can find that on our website. Again, a growing area of interest um, for our members. And so we're really pleased to have that there. And um, one of my favourites is Strategies for Challenging Engagement. This is a, a new one-day advanced course, and it's really in response to the increasing number of wicked problems and trade-offs that you, our members, are contending with as part of your engagement profession. So three great new courses up on our website, three great things happening in advocacy. So keep an eye out for that new report in our thought leadership series, Groundbreakers and Transparency Makers, the role of engagement in ESG, um, the inclusive and accessible policy position paper from IAP2. I expect it's probably going to be more July-ish when we'll be um, have something to share with members, but do keep an eye out for that. And for our New Zealand-based members, check out our submission to the um, Fast Track Approvals Bill on our website. 